In this Fusion 360 foundational concepts lesson, we will learn when and why to use different modeling techniques inside Fusion 360. There are multiple modeling techniques inside Fusion 360. These consist of parametric, direct, freeform, surface, and mesh modeling. These techniques can be used at different times while modeling to aid in different product development processes. Once you master them, you could even use them in different combined workflows to get some awesome results. Now let's jump in. Parametric modeling is one of the most popular CAD modeling techniques. Parametric modeling is utilized in tools like Inventor and SolidWorks. Parametric geometry is driven by dimensions and constraints, which make designs precise for manufacturing reasons. Typically, we will start with a 2D sketch and add sketch dimensions and sketch constraints. While sketching, it's best practice to fully define the sketch with dimensions and constraints. Fully defining a sketch makes sure you get the correct size geometry. Now many of these features will start with a 2D sketch, then a feature will be used to turn that sketch into 3D geometry. There are two types of parametric features. Sketch features, for example, we can extrude, revolve, sweep, and loft, or applied features, like a chamfer or fillet where you select an edge for your input. One aspect of parametric modeling that makes it so powerful is the time-based feature list that can be edited in time. We call this the timeline at the bottom of Fusion 360. Features are built off each other in parametric modeling. Design changes to features anywhere in the timeline propagate to features further down in the list. Essentially, these features are rules on how the geometry will react when design changes are made. Make sure to watch the video on design intent in the Fusion Foundation series to understand this concept further. One major downside to parametric modeling is design changes can break downstream features if the rule the feature is driving no longer can be true. For example, when this hole is moved, it breaks the fillet feature which references the edge. This hole caused the single edge to be turned into two edges. The red in the timeline means that there is an error and no geometry is being created, where yellow in the timeline means that there is an error but geometry is still being created. We can resolve this issue by editing the fillet feature and Fusion 360 will automatically recognize this edge has been separated into two edges. Don't worry, these broken features can always be repaired with a little work. Parametric modeling is so powerful because of the different dimensions, relationship, and rules that are set up while modeling. This technique makes it more predictable when changes are made. Unfortunately, using this technique alone is time consuming to create complex surfaces. So up until this point, we have been using solid parametric modeling. Don't worry, we'll talk about surface parametric modeling in a few minutes. The next modeling technique is used to create complex surfaces and is driven by T-Splines technology. In Fusion 360, it is called creating a form. A common workflow for an industrial designer is to start with a conceptual sketch, which can be created in a variety of different drawing tools like Sketchbook, for instance. A form can be started using one of the basic primitives, using a sketch to drive a form surface, or using the face tool to lay out different faces on a plane relative to a concept sketch. In the sculpt environment, Fusion 360 switches to a subdivisional modeler. This means that the surface is subdivided into multiple faces. When creating a freeform surface, one of the options is to add more or less faces while defining the size of the surface. It is best practice with our freeform tools to start with a relatively coarse mesh and add edges in areas of high detail. Once the surface is created and is divided into multiple faces, the edit form tool can be used to manipulate different CVs, also known as control vertices. Luckily, in Fusion 360, control vertices, edges, or faces can be used to manipulate the shape. The manipulator will let you translate, rotate, or scale these different entities. Now, we come back to the T-Splines technology. The main reason to start with a coarse mesh is because in Fusion 360, edges can be added without increasing the entire density of the mesh. Increasing the mesh makes the surface harder to control and slows down your performance. T-Splines is a patent technology that allows for T-junctions, hence the T in T-Splines. Now these tools allow for quick iterations of complex surfaces. Creating this geometry with surfacing techniques would require many sketches and many features to drive the same geometry. With the freeform tools, a team can quickly iterate on designs without changing complex parametric features. Once you are done editing a surface in the sculpt environment, hit the finish form command. 
Other features can reference this freeform surface, but if you ever need to come back and edit the freeform surface, simply edit the freeform feature in the timeline and jump right back into the freeform tools. Our next modeling technique is located in the patch workspace. I refer to these as surfacing tools. Surface features can use a sketch to drive 3D geometry, or surfaces can be driven by edge selections to help with transitions. One of the major advantages of using surfaces over the sculpt tools is that when design changes update the sketches or edges, the surface will also update. These surfaces are parametric but have a zero thickness to them. These surfaces are excellent tools to use to cut geometry, replace faces, or to use for up to surface end conditions while solid modeling. Some designs start with these surfaces, then they are turned into solid geometry. One workflow is to use the thicken tool. This will apply a specified constant thickness to the surface. This workflow is excellent for constant thickness designs seen in plastic injection molded parts. But my favorite workflow for creating a solid out of group of surfaces is using the boundary fill. This method requires a watertight volume, so make sure your surfaces clearly intersect to form a closed volume. With the boundary fill command, select the surfaces or tools, then select the volumes you want to keep and in seconds we have solid geometry that will update if one of the surface tools are changed. Make sure to try out different boundary fill operations to get a variety of results. Now let's move on to our next modeling technique. This next one is referred to as direct modeling. To switch to a direct modeling mode, simply right click the top level and select do not capture design history. Warning, this will delete your timeline if you have modeled using parametrics thus far. Direct modeling ignores all the laws of parametrics where there is a time-based feature tree. Notice that there is no timeline at the bottom of Fusion 360. The real power of direct modeling comes with using the move command with faces selected. But before we use it, here is a trick. Pre-select the faces before going into the move command. Here we can translate and rotate the selected faces to get the desired output. The direct editing technique is great for making last minute changes to a design or for defeaturing geometry for different post processes like simulation. But I would have to say my favorite workflow for direct modeling is repairing and editing imported geometry from other CAD tools. Files that come from other CAD tools or step or IGES files do not carry the features that were used to create the geometry. This is true for many tools. When importing CAD neutral files into Fusion 360, I am automatically thrown into the direct modeling mode, which means I don't have a timeline. In this mode, we can use the Find Features command to see if Fusion 360 can recognize certain features from other CAD tools. This function works well for holes, fillets, and simple extrudes. Now, I see we have a strange blend created from a different CAD tool. I can simply select the faces belonging to the blend and hit the Delete key. Then I can move the face back and reapply a better fillet to fix the blend. In other CAD tools, changes like these would require either rebuilding the model or the use of bad modeling practices. On the other hand, a model might be imported with small sliver faces, ugly blends, small artifacts, and more. In this mode, simply select the issue and hit the delete key on your keyboard. The items you select is very important for this method. So make sure to select the correct faces before you hit the delete key. If you get an error or unwanted results, simply undo by hitting the Ctrl Z command. Then try selecting a different combination of faces and try again. Now to turn on parametrics and jump out of direct modeling mode, simply right click the top level design and select capture design history. Finally, our last modeling techniques is mesh modeling. This is our newest addition to Fusion 360. In the mesh workspace, we can modify and repair meshes. Meshes can come from a variety of sources, but mainly they will come from scanning a model with a 3D scanner. In this workspace, we can import a mesh file, which is an STL or OBJ file. Here, we can remesh the file to get a better density of triangles. This will try to change the aspect ratio of the triangles to a more desired result. Make sure to use preserve edges to capture sharp edges from the original mesh. Some mesh files have unwanted features. In this workspace, we can use the Erase and Fill to select, delete, and patch the unwanted mesh geometry. This next workflow is one of my favorites in the mesh workspace. Let's say I have a legacy design sitting in my shop. I can scan that legacy part and import it into Fusion 360. 
Now in this case, I have a new design of the hub that I've modeled, which I want to integrate to the scan of the wheel. Instead of modeling the wheel again, I can convert my new design of the hub into a mesh. Then I can merge the two bodies of the hub and the wheel. Next, I could spend this to my 3D printer to get a prototype of this design quickly. So that was an introduction to the different modeling techniques in Fusion 360. I urge you to try and use these in combination in different workflows. Make sure to check out other learning sections for deep dives into each of these modeling techniques. You will find that there are benefits to using one modeling technique over another. Make sure to share in the forums if you find a new workflow that really speeds up your design process.